Welcome to Hello and welcome back to Greg Goes All In. I'm Greg, I'm an actor, and I'm a huge disappointment to my ancestors because I make poker memes and poker vlogs for a living. And today we're covering a Greg's game that happened on Monday. A Greg's game is a virtual meetup game that I host on my Discord server. If you haven't already joined, link is in the description below. The game's happening almost every day. It's gonna be a fun time. One, two, no limit, hold them. Long poker vlog intros are overrated. Let's get right into it. Okay, early on, we pick up Queen King offsuit under the gun. I get three bet immediately and it folds back to me and we defend. Heads up out of position, flop comes 3, 4, 8 to rainbow. I'm thinking this doesn't hit the 3 betters range at all, and so we decide to donk here 30 into 50, and bingo calls. Turn comes another low card, so we overbet jam to get pulled from his ace highs, maybe even his pocket pairs. Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, Greg. <laughs> First hand, I know, man. you just got here. It's so sad. Uh, I've seen you do so much shit, though. That's the thing, so... That's, the, that's the stuff I want you to see. It's all propaganda. <laughs> ah, you're good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> He's never folding kings. Oh, no. yeah. Welcome to the table. Very nice. Greg, welcome to the club. <laughs> Introducing the five stages of grief when your bad bluff does not go through. It was a good bluff. How can he call with kings? It's only a strong overpair. Maybe I am a donkey. I am a donkey. Well... Time to buy back in and try again. Folks, we are punting off real money here for content and lol, so please like and subscribe and hit the bell. It's very important that you hit the bell. Dear God, I need to pay rent. Reloaded and revenge range activated. We make a loosey goosey under the gun open with Queen 10 offsuit and my friend and fellow maniac Alan min raises to 10 on the button. It folds back to me and we call. Heads up to the flop out of position. We smash it with top two pair playing Queen 10 under the gun like a donkey pays off. Checks to Alan who bets big and we just call to trap our very aggressive friend. Turn is the eight of clubs and when he bets big again, with all the straight and flush draws available, I want to commit his stack in now and rip it all in. Let's tune in for some fun table talk with Alan. I have the lower straight, you asshole. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Do you? Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. This is like oh, the wait. corny thing. What do you got? It's King bro. Jack? Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> Oh, that's what I get for overvaluing two pair. Well, at least I can boat up. <laughs> oh. oh no, I'm good. I don't oh. have it. Oh, Obviously, fuck you. I you fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you lie to me, Alan? It's not like we're playing poker or something. Next hand, nine's in the cutoff. Herm opens under the gun, plus one. Alan, who busted earlier and has returned under the new code name, Revenge, calls. Ash calls, I call to set mine, and the big blind calls. Little tip about set mining, you're gonna flop a set with a pocket pair around one in 10 times, so you need to make sure that you have the implied odds to call. In this case, the question is, if I do hit my set, can I make at least 60 bucks, or in other words, 10x of what I put in? And with this many callers and with these large stacks, the answer is absolutely yes, so we go ahead to set mine five ways to the flop which comes jack eight six two clubs we don't hit our set but we do have second pair it checks to revenge alan who's bet around two thirds of the pot i call it when i was folds we're heads up again to the turn in position against revenge range alan turn is the four of spades alan bets again 38 into 77 and I think against any other player, I can just fold here, especially in the flop when he's betting to a multi-way pot. But it is Alan, so we're gonna just get a little sticky here and we're gonna call again. And the river is the queen of spades. We now have third pair. And now Alan bets half pot, and at this point I'm thinking his line makes no sense if he had a jack. I can understand betting flop in turn, but definitely not river when the spade draw and an overcard comes in. I'm thinking even two pair checks here. Um, the only hand I can think of at the time that makes sense with his line is a straight, like 5-7, or some missed straight draw turned flush. But even a straight might bet smaller given the flush draws out there, I don't know, something seems fishy, and I'm a call station. So we just smash buttons and we pray. Woohoo! Why? <laughs> Do you not believe I have a jack? I no, because like, jack checks back once the queen comes in. No, I'm not thinking you have a queen, that's for sure. Who's placed the... Maybe an ace comes in, yeah, I check it, not a queen. Okay, okay, know. get that mad at me for making the right play. No, no, I'm, I'm mad at you <laughs> because I suck. <laughs>
Next hand, we pick up a couple of quart knees in the big blind. That's right, because she's a queen. Herm opens in middle position. Three people call. It's time to punish all of them. And we raise it to 35. It's a little on the small end, but these people give me way too much credit for a guy that says stay loose, play seven deuce. And they've been folding to all of my three bets so far. So we size small. Herm, the initial raiser, now re-raises me to 102. Everyone else gets out of the way, and we have a decision. It's a weird spot, because I think... At best, I'm flipping against this 4-bet range, which is aces, kings, and ace-king. So, no need to jam here, we just call and evaluate a flop, which is going to be pretty easy to evaluate as we flop essentially the nuts. We check to him to let him see bet his entire range. He kindly obliges, we rip it in, he calls, we're running it twice, and off to see two run outs. Okay. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm so happy I pulled it! Oh, that's tough. Oh, wow. man. Okay. You just made the plug. Wow. Dial. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, ouch. Being on the good end of a set over set is always great. And we love rivering quads in the second board, even though we don't need it to win, because it gives us some good clickbait material. Okay, I'm not in this next hand, but it was just so disgusting. I had to share it. This one's for you, Alan. <laughs> he wants to run it twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, no. Mm. Give him a five. What the okay. fuck? Oh, okay. holy. Okay. Yo, okay. this is shit. I'm going dead. I'm no! Oh, bro, I'm on the screen. I'm on the screen. Alan, <laughs> Alan you go. Oh, you my God. Goat, oh, Alan. my God. That's actually disgusting, brother. Alan, who is your god? Honestly. I will convert right now. Gus Hansen. Gus <laughs> <laughs> Next hand, there's an under the gun open. There's a caller, a middle position, three bet. I call in the cutoff with ace 10 offsuit. Under the gun and Alan call. Four ways to the flop in a three bet pot. It comes ace, jack, nine, rainbow. We've got top pair, but we have to be cautious about our kicker, especially against an under the gun opener and a middle position three better. Alan surprisingly leads out here. The original three better calls I call and under the gun fold. Turn is the jack of clubs and now sip jams. Definitely not comfortable calling this all in with just top pair, medium kicker, especially when the jack pairs the board. And I still have Alan to act behind me, so we let this one go and we never find out what's the pad. But when I find myself in times of trouble, all my Courtney's come to me. That's right, we've got Courtney's once again. We open in middle position with our Courtney's, and what a blessing, the short stacked small blind three bets us. Revenge Alan calls. We make an annoying four bet size to 100 instead of 103. Alan calls and I call my own bet essentially. Flop comes 3-3 three, three deuce, two diamonds. If I was ahead pre-flop, I'm probably ahead now. When Alan checks, there's only one move available given his stack to pot ratio. Alan folds and we are up against Ace King of Clubs. Running it twice for a big pot, enjoy. Come on. Did you click twice? Tell me you clicked twice. No five, no ace, no king. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, GG. Courtney's never let me down. There's nothing in the world I love more than Courtney's. Except motherfucking aces! We open in the cutoff with our rockets. We've got a customer. Hello, Revenge Allen. Flop comes. Jack 8, 3, 2 hearts. Allen checks and we see bet slightly more than half the pot on this semi connected board, and Allen calls. Turn is the 10 of hearts, it checks to me again, and we can't be too scared of the flush draw just yet, and we need to get value from Jack X's, so we bet around half pot again. When he check jams all in, it's not ideal, but against Alan, I think I call. So we call in, yep, we're drawing dead. You fucker, I hate you so much. You piece of shit, you know that? Yeah, baby! Aces get cracked. I'm sorry I ever said anything bad about Courtney's. Courtney's is love. Courtney's is life. Aces are bad. They look good. But in the end, you just end up broken sad. Reminds me of my ex. Next, we've got pocket fours on the button. Middle position opens to six. Ash three bets to 22. I call, hoping to set mine and realize my implied odds. And initial razor folds. Heads up to the flop comes ace, five, ace, rainbow. And when the three better checks to me, I feel pretty sure that they don't have an ace here. Two aces on the board make it less likely that he has an ace. And if he has an ace, he should be betting here. So it seems like a pocket pair like jacks, queens, or kings. I see bet small, which is exactly how I'd bet 
any of my ace x hands and he calls. Turn is the nine of hearts and when it's checked to us again, we up the pressure and bet 55 into 83 and he snap calls via the river which comes the jack of hearts. I'm pretty much giving up. The way he snap called me on both streets kind of makes me feel like he's trapping with ace king or ace queen. So when he checks to me, I quickly just check back and he shows pocket kings and we lose this one. Okay, last hand will go over. Ace queen in the cutoff under the gun limps. Sip opens to nine. Frank calls and we three bet in the cutoff with our ace queen to 36 and only sip calls. Heads up in position to a flop which comes ace, eight, king, rainbow. We flop, top pair, top kicker and a backdoor straight draw. Checks to me and we go big here because according to Jonathan Little, yes I study, if you have the nut advantage, the range advantage and your opponent connects well with this flop, you go big. So I bet 65 and he snaps me off. Turn is a queen giving me two pair, it checks to me again. And with SPR being pretty low for Sip, this time we bet small, less than a quarter pot, and Sip calls. River is the eight of clubs pairing the board, and when he checks to me again, I'm a little uncertain what to do here because in my last session, I jammed two pair and got called by the third nuts. And ever since then, I've been kind of wary about not overvaluing two pairs. If I jammed here, do I only get calls from boats and straights? If I bet small for thin value, am I able to fold? If I get check jammed, do I just check back? Honestly, not sure what to do in these kinds of spots, so please let me know in the comments section. Always open to hearing your constructive criticism. Anyway, in the end, I do choose to jam. I am Greg goes all in after all. He snap folds, and he later tell me he folded ace 10. All right, let's run the numbers. We played for four hours. We were in for $584. We cashed out for $1,095, giving us a profit of $511. Thank you so much for watching, you filthy degenerates. And if you're a Canadian filthy degenerate, just a reminder, I still have a bunch of signed Greg Goes All In sunglasses to sell. More information about that in the description. And if you're not in Canada, you can still get a bunch of these sunglasses. Just go to my merch store, link in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching, you filthy degenerates. Stay loose, play 7 Deuce, and I'll see you next time.